Good morning, David Stewart here. Thought I'd take a minute to talk about something that's been making its rounds on the news. And that thing is this uh, object right here, this black box that says Gibson G-Force on the back of a Gibson headstock. Um, what this is, is this is an auto tuning device. Uh, basically what you do is you set the tuning, you press a button, you strum the strings, and then it will turn the gears of the tuners and actually tune your guitar for you. So it's a pretty cool device. Um, however, it's got a lot of people and a lot of purists up in arms um, and very upset with Gibson. Gibson's been getting a lot of flack for a couple of years now, I guess. Um, a lot of people, here's a Cocker story. A lot of people do not like this guy, the CEO. Um, he has a reputation for being kind of a, kind of a jerk or being very hard and very strict on his employees. And this is another decision by the company that's I could, I think is a little bit odd. And um, the real controversy is not that this thing exists um, or that it doesn't work or something like that, but that it is going to come on all standard Gibson guitars. Um, and also they're raising the price of the guitar. So essentially you're gonna be paying more for the guitar and you're gonna get a device that you may not want or need. You don't have an option to just get standard tuners on the guitar. Not that I think standard Gibson tuners are particularly special, but it'd be nice to have the option for people who want that. So whenever you're going to buy a standard American made Gibson, you're going to get this. And the company says, this is here to stay. And, um, and if you don't want that, you're going to have to buy a custom shop instrument. If we, uh, this article is from an NPR station in Nashville. And of course, uh, Gibsons are made in Tennessee. So we we'll scroll down here and here's all the flack. Um, from all the people who apparently are hating on Gibson. The you know, problem for me is the price hike in general. Um, and we'll talk about that in more in a second. So they are raising the price. Price of Gibson guitars has been going up over time. Of course, that's going to happen because we have an inflationary currency. Um, so anything, any kind of commodity is going to go up over time. Um, let's actually take a look. This, this automatic tuner is not very new you can actually buy these and get them on a variety of guitar brands and put them on there and they're pretty cool um there's some other brands that make them i think this uh i've had some experience to use not this one but an earlier version of this and it seemed to work pretty well it was kind of cool um it came originally on this guitar here this nice blue guitar called the robot this is from wikipedia um and I remember when these came out, basically you would punch a button and you'd strum the strings and it would turn the tuners and then your guitar would be in tune. Pretty cool little device. Um, but now they're gonna be standard. If we go over to the site, here is a Les Paul standard. So I brought up 2015 Les Paul standard, that's this year. We can see that um, the price on here is pretty steep. $3,800, that's a lot of money for any guitar. Um, if you're, of course this is list priced, so you should probably not be spending list priced if you're, even if you're gonna buy it new, you should probably be spending 3,000 to 3,200 to get this particular guitar plus tax. Um, that would be my estimation of a good street price. And if we go down here, first thing, new and improved in 2015, G-Force tuners, building on eight years of continuous development, going back, all the way to the robot guitar. Um, been on eight years of continuous development, GeForce extends the innovations introduced in the Mini Tune by introducing new firmware that greatly improves ease of use. Firmware is just uh, software that's flashed onto um, a hard piece of memory like ROM. So firmware doesn't mean anything special, that just means software. Uh, Say it's firmer than software because it's on a ROM and you flash it onto the ROM as opposed to writing it to a rewritable disk. Okay, and that it it acts as the operating software as well. So that doesn't mean anything special. Combined with increased speed and accuracy, GeForce provides the best and simplest user experience yet in an automated tuning system. Okay, so I kind of look at this as a little bit like a an auto dialer on a rotary phone that like dials the rotary phone. It's like we kind of, it's kind of cool, I guess, but it's not that hard to dial a rotary phone. Um, the other thing about the price here and the fact that this isn't an option is that nobody who's buying a 
$1,000 guitar, I should say very, very few people, don't know how to tune a guitar. So every single person who's buying this guitar that's a guitar player already knows how to tune an instrument, has a tuner. You can get tuners for your smartphone that uh, work really, really well and are free. So uh, you don't have to pay an extra three or 500 bucks to have an auto tuner when you have an actual tuner on your um, on your phone. Some other things that people haven't liked in the past is this zero fret uh, adjustable nut. This is a brass nut <clears throat> that has some little screws that you can use to raise up and like lower down the nut. Um, and they say slide guitars can raise and lower the action. Slide guitars can raise and lower the action easily. I don't know too many slide guitarists that are going to sit there and get a tool out and adjust the neck at a gig. So I don't really know who that's for. And I don't, I'm not really a fan of metal nuts. Um, the big reason is that they burr up, especially on Gibson guitars. They get a lot of burrs. So um, you, these the tuners will get burrs. Um, then now you're going to have burrs on your nut, which is a, a high tension point, and that'll snap strings. And these two pneumatic bridges, I don't, I have one guitar with them, um, and I'm not a huge fan of them because they get a lot of burrs. Um, doesn't seems to not really matter what they're made of. You can have graphite, and this is made of graphite, like of graphite, but then that'll just wear into nothing because graphite is very very soft. Um, you're going to get burrs and have to file them. So um, anyway, so yeah, you have this. This is a that's another controversial feature. Um, you know, heavier gauge wire. Some some Gibsons are coming with more active electronics, um, and a lot of people don't like that either. Uh, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of old school, and in some cases, I, I like very straightforward electronic arrangements. Um, that being said, my main guitar is a little bit more wacky. It's got um, Ghost Tech pickups and stuff like that in it. So anyway, here's a new one for thirty eight hundred bucks. Though you can have a luthier make you a guitar that's probably going to be a lot better guitar. So um, let's talk about the quality. A lot of people feel like the quality of Gibsons have gone down over the years. I don't really think that's the case. I think that Gibsons were never that great to start with. They're, they're good guitars. There's nothing wrong with them. You know, they're not garbage or anything like that. But I feel like since the 90s, they haven't really been worth the price. Um, the last time I considered buying a Gibson retail, they were like 2200 bucks. So that was a long time ago for a good, for a Les Paul standard. And other American competitors, including, including Guild Guitars, which I bought a Guild, um, were like 30% less in their list price and were honestly better guitars. They were just, they had better details on them. I, I liked them better. So... Um, Gibson has been a little overpriced since the 90s, and I think that trend is continuing. So I think you're not quite getting $3,800 worth of guitar for a Les Paul standard, even though, you know, the flame maple looks very nice and is probably good mahogany. Um, I'll also say I have, I have owned exactly one Gibson in my lifetime as a guitar player. It was an SG. It wasn't a Les Paul. So it was one of these guys so a lot cheaper 1800 bucks right and in fact my sg looked almost exactly like this one it was a newer model sg um, it was a good guitar um, i usually don't use gibsons because the scale of the guitar which is the length from the bridge to the nut is a little shorter than um, what i like so i like a 25 and a half inch scale on my electric guitars i do have one guitar that has a gibson scale um, Gibson uses a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale, so the, it's a, everything's a little closer together, um, which feels a little different, and also the neck feels a little slimmer. And I liked the slim SG neck. Um, I did like the feel of the SG neck um, as far as how it felt on the left hand in terms of um, thickness from the front to the back. Um, however, I decided ultimately that I wasn't going to use it because I, you know, I'm not crazy about four knobs and. Um, it just wasn't a guitar for me. So I ended up trading it for Fender, which I liked a lot better, and I usually play Fenders. Um, and I felt really bad because as soon as I traded it to this friend, um, and by the way, I didn't use the Gibson tuners. I don't like the standard Gibson tuners. Um, they, I feel like they slip a lot, and they're kind of 
I just don't like them, so I use Spurzels. Um, as soon as I traded that SG to a friend, the headstock stepped off. Um, so basically when you make a, a neck of mahogany, mahogany is a fairly soft, wide-grained wood, and um, it just split apart in the grain from the tension of the strings, sort of pulling the headstock this way. I felt so bad I repaired it for him for free. Um, I glued it up and uh, did a really good glue up and then later that year the headstock snapped again. Not where the glue up had happened but like right over from it. The grain just peeled away once again. And then I glued it up again and I think that that second glue up actually stuck. I actually put screws. I, I, I did a whole a huge job to get this headstock to stay on this Gibson. Um, and I think that's a little bit because of the mahogany, whatever choice of mahogany they made on that guitar was not a good one. So maybe that is indicative of a decrease in quality. Although I've played older Gibsons and they don't seem necessarily any better. And I've also heard of plenty of those headstocks um, snapping off on Gibsons. It's apparently quite a problem. Um, so, so that, that is, is something, something to watch, watch out for for Gibsons, Gibsons is because, because they, they have, have mahogany neck, neck usually. usually. Mahogany is not, not the best, best neck choice. choice. Better, better neck, neck choices, choices are maple. maple. Maple's, Maple's probably, probably the best. best. Maple's never going to break on you. Um, things like cedar are even better, usually, than mahogany. Um, uh, even hickory, you know. So there's there's better neck choices than mahogany. Mahogany is just sort of traditional. Um, and SG is cool because it's a big, big old hunk of mahogany. Um, but mahogany has a really good sound and has good transfer because of its density. Um, another thing about the uh, let's pull plus we go some of these other ones um, are a little more affordable 2200 bucks that's really not that bad a price um, where was it Les Paul standard Les Paul standard they are saying it's made of low density mahogany I don't know where that is um, uh, I don't know where that is but um, Density, ultra low. I don't necessarily want ultra low density mahogany. I don't care that much about the weight of the guitar. I care about its sound and durability. Um, I'm not, I'm not an old crippled man, so I don't, I don't care that much about it. But you may. Um, anyway, when I see low, low density mahogany, I think of things snapping. So uh, that's that's sort of my opinion on that. Uh, so like I said, the real problem is that increase in the cost of this tuning thing. This, this does increase the cost of the guitar, which makes um, the guitar harder to get for lots of people, um, which means that you're not going to maybe sell as many units. And in the end, you maybe are not making a ton of profit on this little device. So I don't know what kind of, what kind of um, business decision um, that may be. Uh, but whatever, wh whether you like it or not, these particular little tuning devices are here to stay. They do work, but... I don't really think they're necessary for most players they are going to spend uh, $3,800 on a guitar. Um, so anyway, that's all I really had to say about that. I thought I'd bring that to your attention. Um, I still think Gibsons are not really worth the price. That's my opinion. I think other manufacturers for this amount of money offer a whole lot more guitar. And there's a whole bunch that you can look at. Music Man, Fender, I know those may have bolt-on necks. Carvin is a great one if you really want to look at a custom-made guitar that is going to give you way better guitar. In fact, let's look at let's look up Carvin real quick. We'll, we'll go look at Carvin. Uh -huh. There we go. Okay, Carvin guitars. They even have custom guitars. So we'll just look at the Carvin guitars. Uh, they these are basically all custom-made and they look quite quite cool. Let's take a look at the. Let's take a look at the Les Paul style guitars. Okay, so fifteen hundred bucks for this Les Paul style guitar, and it comes with lots of different wood choices that you can order. You can get it in lots of different colors. You can get it string through. You can get it with um, with trends. You can get it. This is really really cool color here. Um, this blue, uh, lots of colors, different finishes, frankly better maple. All the carbon guitars that I've played have been awesome. And for uh, 1500 bucks, you're not going to get 
you're going to get more guitar than that, um, Les Paul, probably. Um, as well as you can get customized pickups. You probably haven't put DiMarzio pickups in or something that you like better. The most expensive one on the page is looks like is one of these two here, which are both very nice um, and will give you the Les Paul look, the Les Paul sound for a whole lot less money. And they're a carved top. They're just really awesome. And then there's a whole bunch of other options if you want a PRS style. Again, 1500 bucks, you're gonna get a really good guitar. So these are ones that are made in a shop here in California, they're really good. And uh, they're a whole lot less than this $3,800 Gibson, which you're probably just not gonna get your money out of. So that's really all I have to say about that. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully this video format didn't bug you too much and have a great day.